Right. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, coffee? I'd love a coffee. With milk, yeah? Yes, please. Thank you. No sugar. No sugar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. Yeah, of course. Uh, as you know, we, we have a whole bunch of questions that have arisen about leadership and YWAM. They've been yeah. out there a long time. But with our YWAM together in yeah. Thailand and then the Malachi meeting before that in Cambodia, okay. you can see that both the younger leaders and the experienced leaders have uh, lots of questions. They yeah, love to talk sure. about them. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to answer some questions while, while I was there, but I could see that there was an appetite for more. Yeah. So we took a lot of them down uh, in written form. Yeah. And thanks for helping me. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have Privileged. a good talk. We will. We'll be great. Well, thanks again, Claire, for helping me with this. Of course. As you know, there are lots of questions. <clears throat> and some of them are, are specific and particular to a given situation. And, and we'll be happy to answer those, but maybe yeah. a little later on. Yeah. You've had a look. Um, are there any sort of overall general questions that you think would, would help us? Yeah, I think it would be great to understand what kind of instigated a change in our leadership and structure. And can you kind of tell us the background on that? Yeah, I can. I'll try to do that without going clear back to 1969. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, YMAN began as a, as a movement where everybody was taught to hear God. And yeah. We didn't really know how to organize ourselves. We grew really fast. And, and almost everything you look at these days is organized like a corporation, uh, like a business, uh, where there are people making managerial decisions and so on. And the thing is, that works against everybody hearing from God. You know? Right. Well, it, it kind of works against respecting the word of the Lord okay, and yeah. others. And it tends to make the word of the Lord to leaders outweigh everything else. And that's kind of a reintroduction of a priesthood. Okay. But scripturally, as you know, in the New Testament, it's the priesthood of everybody, right. all believers. Right. There's no hierarchy, so to speak. No, there isn't. There isn't and there is. Okay. It's a really good question because there's no hierarchy in terms of hearing the word of the Lord, but there's always a hierarchy in influence. Right. And that's something that Lauren actually talks about, right? Yeah. That, that we recognize leaders and the anointing of leadership on people, but there are lots of people with anointing, but how that outplays can look different for different people. So that's what we're trying to do is to, is to organize ourselves so that people's anointing and, and ability and influence is recognized and they have, they have room for it, Absolutely. which is what I think God wanted for Israel in the first place and why he didn't right. want them to have a king. Yeah. But it's also why Jesus didn't leave one person in charge, um, but he had 12. Yeah, a team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they had to get along. Yeah. You know, and and none, of them was, none of them was senior organizationally. And yet, when you read through the New Testament, and like when Paul refers to going to Jerusalem, you see that, well, you know, Peter had a lot of influence. Right. Uh, and probably um, if Peter said something as opposed to, say, James the Lesser or, or someone else, right. you, it would, it would carry more weight. Right. They're not all the same, but no. they are equal in the eyes of Jesus in the sense yeah. of who and, they are. And they're also on a team. Right. Where everybody's respected. Yeah. And, 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 and nobody has the final word. That's kind of one of the questions that comes up again and again. You know, well, who has the final word? Well, Jesus left it that way, so the Holy Spirit has the final word, right. which is confirmed within body, yeah. team. Yeah. So... We, we organized ourselves kind of corporately for a while, uh, 80s and 90s, and, and all in good faith. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that was wrong, but it wasn't yeah. the way we were supposed to be long term. Right. So I think the changes really began in about 2002 when Lauren had a teaching word that he came to uh, a leadership gathering with um, about what well, we call it the tripod message, about the priesthood of all believers. Okay. And his question that he'd asked the Lord in a time of fasting and prayer was, uh, how do we keep our apostolic cutting edge? Right. And it was a priesthood of all believers. But that's not to exclude the fact that there's eldership okay. within the body of Christ. And that you, none of us can unerringly hear the word of the Lord on our own. Right. So we need body. Yeah. So he had those three points, you know, okay. of hearing from God, Good relationships, yeah. and within the relationships, el eldership. Right. So, so yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, so can, you, can you kind of distinguish a little bit for us what eldership is versus leadership and how that outplays within YWAM and what the different responsibilities are within those? And 
I think that's still pretty confusing to, to most <laughs> of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and part of it is because we, we are growing into something based on the word of the Lord to us. And right. I said, you know, there's a 2002 word, so we've been at this a long time. But actually, we didn't get the implications of how we organize ourselves yeah. up yeah. until, I don't know, 2009, 10, 11, and we started implementing. Um, and, and it's still, we're still at the point where the number of people who are elders in YWAM but not carrying day-to-day -day leadership is growing. Okay. In some places, like where we live, yeah. uh, there's a pretty clear distinction and there are leaders who carry yeah. the day-to-day -day, and there are elders who support them and encourage right. them and advise them. Right. Not many of our teams or bases are, are at that stage yet, percentage-wise. Okay. There'd be many, but, but not a high percentage. And so eldership and leadership is kind of the same thing in a lot of those bases. And so, in yeah. some cases, people say, well, what changed? Because right. all we have is the same people with a different title. You know? Yeah. And what has changed is, is that we're growing into something. Yeah, and so it's, a, long... it's, expand, it's actually about expanding our ability to have more leaders, right? It, in, in that yeah. sense, it, rather than constricting or trying to create hierarchy, we're expanding and opening exactly. room for people to grow exactly. in their leadership, no matter what their age is. One of the un, undesirable but unavoidable uh, byproducts of organizing yourself corporately is that there seems to be very few positions available until somebody right. moves on. Right. You know? And, and, and what we're really trying to do is cope with what God has said to us about tenfold growth. Yeah. 200,000 people, more, more, more. Yeah. Uh, how do you do that? Plus, plus, we have this problem where people were thinking, well, there's no more room in YWAM. I might as well go somewhere else because, yeah. you know, this director and that director and that director were, were all in place. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, but, but the language we were using could imply that and, and okay. so you could understand. So we've had to change language. Okay. So eldership and, and leadership are sometimes the same thing, okay. but they're not going to be long term and, and many places are not now because you've got leaders carrying yeah. your day to day and you've got elders who are supportive and counselors and intercessors. And, yeah. Uh, and, and so there is a distinction or there yeah. can be. It's interesting you said about the, the language element of eldership, mm. and I think in some cultures it doesn't translate well, right? So right. how does that play out in nations around the world where eldership means something maybe very different than how we would describe it here in the Western kind of end of yeah. the world? Well, even, even on the Western side, we, we were very hesitant about using that term. So we recognized it was a word that really has to be redeemed. Yeah. That is, it's a good biblical word. Right. Uh, and every language will have an equivalent word as, you, as the scriptures are translated from Greek into that language. Yeah. So we use that language and, and we keep referring back to the scripture to find the definitions of it. Right. So we're not looking to Western culture or to Asian culture right. because their attitudes differ hugely. We're looking to scripture yeah. in which elders are people who are of good character, good standing, yeah. good reputation amongst yeah. others. You know, one of the things about leaders is people have to be willing to follow them. <laughs> that and, is true. <laughs> and so, so you're looking for people like that. And, and, and they need to be people who will serve humbly. Right. So you get both sides, you know. You, yeah. get, you get people who are respected, but they serve humbly. Yeah. And so it's in the eyes of, of well, it's defined in the eyes of people who are willing to serve and the people who are willing to follow. Right. So that, that's how we're doing yeah. it. So the language ultimately comes back to, we've got to go back to the Bible and we've got to look at yeah. the biblical foundation and exactly. kind of deconstruct our understanding of those words in certain cultures and, and look at, back to the Bible and, and start there for our understanding exactly. and let it rise out of that place. Exactly. And remember, it's, it's really about, primarily about letting the Holy Spirit right. be the final word, letting Jesus be head of the church. Because yeah. when we organize these other things, especially where leaders start handling money and that kind of thing, right. they, they begin to be the head. Yeah. And, and that's really what we're trying to get away from. And we won't do this perfectly. No. We haven't done it so far. No. But we are trying to make room for the Holy Spirit yeah. in greater measure. So that's kind of a, yeah. a little summary you of know, why we're making the changes. What strikes me too as we're talking is that, um, you know, I think often people can look into an organization like why I'm thinking it can't work unless we put structures in place and do exactly. the kind of yeah. uh, that system. But the nature of Jesus is he's got an upside down kingdom. Right. And that's, that's right. and that's what that's I love right. about this is that it, on paper, it might not look like it makes sense. 
but actually Jesus shows that it does and yeah. he gave us the pathway for amazing structure in yeah. an unstructured kind of manner yeah. uh, to see yeah. the kingdom extended and and that's that's what I love it's growing and it's making room for extended leadership and that's right and like you say us all hearing the Lord together yeah. and walking in the fear of the Lord which is key yeah and it's it's not actually no structure it's trying to be relational right. structure organic yeah. structure yeah so I think you've got it. Yeah, great. Hope that's clear. That's perfect. Thank you.